everyone. Well, thanks for having me today. Um, let's start very simple. So you've been given these sheets of paper, and as you can all imagine, I'm a physicist, so you'll be writing down some things. We'll do equations, integrals, derivatives, right? Okay, great. For those of you who are watching this later, grab a piece of paper. It's one of the most important things during my speech. Don't throw it away. I mean, yeah, I just mentioned equations. Okay, good, good. Still have it. Um, we'll be looking at some really fundamental laws of physics, and we'll do three things with them. The first one is, we'll use these principles that make space stations fly, and I will tell you what that has to do with your own personal success. We will then know, by the end of this talk, how you can shape your world applying those principles in your day-to-day -day life. And yeah, you will find out what we're really gonna do with that sheet of paper, okay? So I'll put it aside for now. Feel free to just have it in your hands. Simply, thank you for the introduction. Yes, I'm a physicist by training. I spent quite a couple of years studying all the nice laws that you might have heard or you wanted to forget after high school and I really loved it. I did work for the European Space Agency. I was an astronaut instructor for 10 years. I finally got my helicopter license and I love flying around and I hope I can combine that very soon with my paramedic heart that helps people being rescued whenever they are in need. But you know, simply speaking, when I break it down, I'm just a girl and I really, really love to know what governs our planet. I really want to know how things work. I'm just so utterly fascinated by universe. I'm utterly fascinated about star formations and why the grass is green and the sky is blue and all of that kind of things, right? And you might feel the same somehow. So I was, you know, in the end, very much interested in those people that are brave enough to sit on a rocket with about 28 million horsepower blasting off in the sky to find out more about our planet. So for me, the obvious step was, okay, after university, after finishing physics, I really want to work with astronauts. And lucky me, it did work. So for 10 years, I spent most of my time in Cologne, which is our astronaut training center for Europe. So we are the NASA of Europe, just in Cologne, not far from here. And during my time working with those astronauts, I spent most of the time in that nice training hall where we have a one-to-one -one setup of all the different spacecrafts that we're using for the International Space Station. We teach our astronauts everything from survival training, cargo transfer, my part was emergency procedures and all the different life support systems. And I was really, really lucky to be working with at least 80 different astronauts who have either been flying to the ISS or are currently there or might be flying in the near future. And working with astronauts like Chris Hadfield, I mean, you're in awe, right? Because their CV, you just want to be on your knees and say, oh, how did you do that? How did you accomplish all of this? How did you get successful? And all of those, it doesn't matter if it was Russians or people like Chris or our European guys, I mean, they all fly to space. Let's not just speak about the CV, they're flying to space. I mean, they're crazy, right? But, but they're crazily successful doing that. And all the different space agencies working together on that project, you know, five big nations, building a space station, currently, whoop, right now, in space, 400 kilometers, somewhere above our nice surface, circling with 28,000 kilometers per hour. Wow. I'm blown away by that. How in the world does that work? How does success work? How do you get a mission to be successful? I want to know. Well, before I ended up, at the European Space Agency, I, knew I had to go through my physics studies. You know, I was far, far away from really understanding how success really works, because I, I'm sure you all remember either, or you still do know what it feels like to be sitting on these hard wooden benches. <laughs> and then we'd be sitting there and you're going like, oh, okay, one day. Okay, so I spent my time studying physics at the University of Bayreuth, which is in Bavaria. I was very happy to be there. One of the smaller ones, but nevertheless, one of the best ones, I believe, by biased, maybe. Um, and studying physics is great. I can, I can only recommend it to you. Whatever you have studied, or maybe you have never studied, or you want to study, go study physics at one point in your life, because it will tell you a lot of things. L lots of things that you don't want to know, also. <laughs> so um, sitting there on those wooden benches, you know, I was using, most of the time, ha only half of my brain. 
the analytical part, right? All the compassion part was, was really not there. Um, half of my brain and the other part was always like going, like, attention, me too. Or you said, okay, okay, I can't just be sitting in these wooden benches. I need to get myself out and be distracted from studying physics. So there was just one obvious choice. We had an archery club, so I chose archery, right? And I chose archery because I wanted to feel free in my head again so I could understand why the sky is blue. I could understand why, you know, in the northern hemisphere, uh, storms uh, ro rotate in a counterclockwise manner. They are flying off to Florida and hitting the beach again. And I want to know how auroras form and why. Right? So I would need to take my brain off from that. So archery it was because I was really struggling with the fact that those wooden benches were too hard. Okay, archery. Fun thing. So twice a week I would go to my archery lessons and I would be standing with my other fellow archery persons in a big grass field in the middle of uh, our running track. So we were allowed by the sports faculty to be there. So funnily enough, small anecdote, I never quite understood why our training was set the same as the running club training. <laughs> so I don't know whether it was for their motivation or for ours. <laughs> it did work. It did work. So we spent some time doing archery, right? And I just, you know, still physics exams. Do you remember that? Gosh, it was like the, the biggest mountain and hurdle we had in front of us exam time and then oh, how will I pass my exam and I just really freaking don't understand that math and who can explain that to me and anyways what am I doing here how how did I come up with the idea of studying physics like who am I going to be there's doctors and become doctors work in a hospital and there's other people doing economics and they will be great doing other things right and then there's physicists uh, okay well big struggle struggle how to be successful term it could physics tell me the answer? At that point in time, I wasn't too sure. Now I know better. I was thinking about success so much that I did another TEDx talk on that. But there I used principles from astronaut selection. So that's already out there. So we exploited astronauts enough, so today, sadly, we'll not be talking too long about astronauts. Bah. OK. We'll have to, we have to use something completely different to now come up with what you know, your personal thoughts and, and success has to do with that blank piece of paper that you were handed, and space stations. Okay, still big gap. I will be using another big principle that you all know about, and if you do have children, you certainly know about it. It's gravity. Yeah, do they do that? They, toddlers are great for those kind of experiments. <laughs> right, so we'll be using gravity, and I will tell you why gravity is one of the most decisive things that can tell you whether you'll be successful or not. And we'll be using it. While doing archery, you know, I wanted to be really good. Maybe I'm a perfectionist on one people's scales, I don't know. But I really just all wanted to be in bullseye center, right? Who, who didn't want to? So we were standing in the grass and I always wanted to hit the target in the right spot. It went so-so, right? Um, why? Why is that? Well, because you have to know how to use equipment, right? And you somehow have to understand how arrows fly in the air, right? There are two factors that I want to be using today. They have nothing to do with equations. You won't have to remember equations. Yes, right? But still, I will use two principles that govern how space stations fly and how you can be successful and why I did not hit bullseye center in that target. And the very first one is speed defeats gravity. Sounds great, no? OK, I'll tell you why. So back to that target, right? So standing in front of the target, bow right there, you know, bowstring, <laughs> shaking. If you don't give enough impulse to your arrow, what will happen? Well, it will go short, right? It will resemble all the other arrows just in front of your target. Very, very easy. Only the ones where you pull the bowstring long enough will actually make it towards the target. It does not say that it will hit the target in the right spot. It will just go towards where the target is. Okay? That's easy. We all did that. 
We'll do it together now. So here comes our little empirical experiment, which we can do because I, I kind of refrained when I, when I told uh, the event organization team that I would come with a bow and arrow, they said, no, you won't. <laughs> so I said, okay, well, I'll come up with something different. So we'll, instead of a bow and arrow for everyone's sake and health, we'll just be using a paper. And yes, we'll, we'll make our small arrow with that. And thank you, you all understood what your task is. We'll be very fast. Okay. Small principle, you all know it, don't hit me, yes? What happens if I just throw this slightly? It will just go this far. What happens if you give your little resembling arrow more energy? Well, show me what happens. <laughs> yes, thank you, exactly. Well, you're doing it all right, <laughs> almost, almost. Thankfully, you only had one piece of paper, okay? So in essentially what you were trying to do, obviously, you were trying to set this on a trajectory around the planet. Well, it did work almost, right? <laughs> Long story short, if we give an item, an object, enough energy, it will travel a little while. If you give it more energy, it will travel even further. And if you give it a lot of energy, well, you're throwing it this way, and then you have to go, whoop. Why? Because it will just make it once around the planet. I'm leaving out the equations. You just have to trust me. <laughs> OK? OK. OK, who's, who's close enough to one of those balls? Grab some. Who is not? Sorry. Um, so this little guy helps us to understand why the space station flies. The space station flies on that principle. We give it speed, a lot of speed. And it looks fantastic and it makes roaring sounds. Okay, we give it a lot of speed. What happens is physics and gravity does a great trick. It will travel more or less in a tangent, so parallel to the surface, and it would travel parallel out in to, towards outer space along that green arrow if there wasn't gravity. And what does gravity do? A little arrow travels for some time straight. Gravity pulls it a little bit in, and it will still have enough energy to still travel straight again. Gravity pulls it in. And so, slowly but surely, it will make its round around our planet. Cool thing, right? We just built a space station. So, applause to you. So, enough speed will make really heavy objects fly. That's cool. That pulled me into physics, right? It makes the International Space Station fly. This simple rule, you gave it speed. Well, I tested that, right? I tested that in a parabolic flight that you can actually, you know, somehow switch off gravity and fall as if there wasn't gravity. Hmm, falling. Talking about falling, yeah, actually we are tricking gravity. Gravity is not something we can switch off. There is no red button. But we can make it disappear if we are falling at the right speed with it. So in a parabolic flight, we use a plane, you set off, you go into a parabola, and you're actually falling with that plane, same speed, towards the Atlantic Ocean. Yeah, it's good as long as you don't look out the window, right? Tried that once. If we did not have something that could adjust our orbit for the International Space Station, we would be doing the same thing because eventually there's enough you know, pull and there's still enough atmosphere left that could pull the space station back towards the Earth further and further. We don't want that. We will be not employed anymore. Uh, we want the space station where it is. So we have this little guy. He was my baby, our transfer vehicle. He pushed the station every once in a while, giving it speed. Speed, right? Okay. So we have speed. But the other thing is focus. There's lots of equations involved with focus. We're not talking about equations. What does focus mean? One other thing. Going back to archery. So now I'm in, in the field. Running club's still there. Okay, cool. Right? And I know I have to really pull on my bowstring to make my arrow fly. Well. I'll make it fly, obviously, by looking at the target. What will happen? 
this. Because I know you know, because at one point in your life you've had physics, that objects have a tendency to fall back down to the ground and they do it in a parabolic way. You've all done that. So what do I need to do in order to hit the target? I will actually have to miss the target by quite a bit. I have to make sure that I put an azimuth, an angle, in my, well, exaggerated, in my bow and arrow line to make sure that I counteract gravity. Gravity pulls us down. And this little guy here is a good resemblance for you in everyday life that you will need to adjust your focus. If you want to hit a target, don't just focus on your target. Remember, gravity is always pulling you down. It will give you days where you will not feel like studying, you will not feel like working on your project. So counteract, move higher. Focus on goals that are higher than the ones you want to reach. And if that doesn't impress you at all, well, make a little paper ball, throw it away, or use this blank sheet of paper to transform it into something that can fly. So maybe your life is like that blank sheet of paper, and maybe so is your success. And you can make it fly. Thanks.